Hello and welcome to today's edition of Route 664, The Road to Human Kindness. I'm your host, Les Winston, and I'm also the national spokesperson for socialsecharity.org. Socialsecharity.org. It's all one word. Social Secharity. S-E-C-H-A-R-I-T-Y. Like charity added to social, but putting S-E in between sounds like Social Security. Very similar to Social Security because Section 664 of the tax code allows you to do the same thing that Social Security does, which is get income for retirement, except that using Section 664 of the tax code makes it more appealing. It makes it uh, more controlled in the sense that you have an idea of what is actually in your account. You also have some control of what it's going to produce in terms of income. So you have a better uh, arrangement for retirement built right into the tax code, and it's been there for over 50 years. And most people don't know it exists. So this program and this uh, campaign of the Endow America Network Foundation to get you to understand what social security is and what Section 664 of the tax code can do for you. That's what this program is all about. And we have a a group of people in the country that are advisors who specialize in this area of philanthropic planning. Because at the end of the day, with a Section 664 trust or a Section 664 device, you get to leave money to charity and you endow America. That's what we're all about, endowing America. We want to get enough money into the charitable sector so that we can take care of the problems of the communities without government. Julia, uh, President George H.W. Bush said that the government is limited, but the potential of the American people is unlimited. And the point is that we can do more with charitable wealth than government can do with the grants and the efforts that government makes to solve community problems. That's what we want to do, bring it back down to the community. Uh, From time to time, we interview uh, other professional philanthropic advisors around the country. And then my guest today is somebody I'm very fond of. Uh, Jack uh, has been a board member of the Endow American Network Foundation from its inception and uh, has uh, volunteered his time uh, to serve uh, the Endow American Network Foundation, as well as other things in other areas of his community. Uh, Jack Sullivan is a CLU and a chartered financial counselor. I believe that's a, a, a chartered financial counselor. I believe that's what that, that is. In any case, Jack Sullivan from New Jersey. How are you today? Well, Wes, I'm pretty good. I'm uh, enjoying uh, life uh, as it goes on and uh, can't complain. Uh, anyway, most are you people retired? listen when you're complaining. No, you no, retired? I'm still, still working with uh, one client in uh, central Pennsylvania. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been with him for literally 19 years, and uh, we run a family office for him. And uh, I uh, you know, actually grew, grew I don't up down. Folks, in, uh, I don't think folks ahead. know what a family office is, and I want you to develop that a little bit uh, for our listeners. Um, you, sure. you, you still, you still are doing that after all, after so many years of working with him. The reason you're working with him so many years is because you're actually doing a family office. Is that are those two uh, statements compatible? I'd say yes. I I will tell you this. Uh, the reason I'm doing what I I'm doing today is that back in 1998, uh, I started uh, mentoring under uh, uh, a person called Jay Link out of uh, Indianapolis, and uh, he was about uh, putting together a program to help advisors help families thoughtfully, you know, uh, take their wealth and, and, and in a meaningful way, uh, move it from one generation to the next and get uh, a buy-in from the family on uh, phil- uh, phil- philanthropy and what their thoughts were, uh, either the family members. Mm-hmm. But uh, I did that. And then subsequent to that, I, I did uh, a mentoring under the Heritage Institute, um, which was out of uh, Portland, Oregon. And as a result of that, I, uh, I had left the financial planning business. I had my own financial planning company and uh, in 2002 really started uh, working with 
the client I have today. So it's going to be 20 years this year, as a matter of fact, uh, wow. that I've been working with him. But I was I was born and raised in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and, and he is from that area. And I went actually went to school with him. He's a couple of years older than I am. And uh, so I've been with him for 20 years. We have a CFO and and what we do is he went from a business family that he owned a trucking company and um, he went from there to uh, to a, uh, a money family. And uh, so uh, we set up um, uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of entities uh, as a result of that and did a lot of planning to uh, help, help hopefully transmit the trans transition the wealth from one generation to the next and we're actually working with two generations the grandchildren right now what is the ultimate objective is it the hundred year uh, hundred years of wealth is it that kind of planning um, well we do have a dynasty trust which was on for the grandchildren and subsequent mm -hmm. other grandchildren. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what happens is there's a lot of uh, things happen to families where there's a loss of uh, the values and uh, that uh, are in one generation to the next. And hopefully uh, with this dynasty trust, we did it in such a way that it will bring no harm. We aren't going to have trust babies like you hear a lot of people and kids that just live off the trust because mm -hmm. it was set up in that way. So, yeah, it may not go. And there is a there's there's a valve that can be pulled uh, in this trust that they can wind up going all to charity uh, after 30 years. So um, I, I think a lot of people aren't really familiar with uh, the concept or haven't uh, thought about the concept of the shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations where, um, you know, the first genera generation that creates wealth and then what, do, you know, how do they protect that from going when it's going forward to the next generations? There are things that can happen, obviously, with the next generation. I have a client right now who uh, I his kids are 40 years old and he still pays all their bills. And, uh, you know, I said to him, I said, it's time for them to get a paycheck, you know, why don't you just give them a paycheck instead of giving them a handout because they don't have a kind of feeling about what they're doing in, a, in the same sense. It's like they're still relying on you. If they need something, they call you for whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You find that arranging the wealth in a family gets you into some interpersonal relation, interpersonal uh, situations where the people are uncomfortable, you know, the kids feel uncomfortable. How do you, how do you get past that, that, well, that concept? I, I think, um, actually, you know, 20 years ago, we, we started with the family and we did a lot of interviewing. We took every one of the, uh, children and sat with their and their husband, their uh, spouses. And, uh, what we found is that, uh, you know, there were a lot of different, uh, Children are always different, as you all know, one from the other, <laughs> and uh, they. Uh, yes, they can it's, be. It, it it certainly was a challenge, but we had a lot of tools that we used in order to find out where they where they are, what they are all about, what they want, and I think it was that process was very helpful. Um, the other thing is that we did. Um, with the Heritage Institute, I, I learned a, a process through them. And uh, actually, you can't do what I've done and what other people try to do unless you have a team of people. And by this, I mean, at the Heritage Institute, we, we learned a process uh, to, first of all, uh, get them to tell their story. And I'm talking about the, the mother and father, the patriarch and mm -hmm. matriarch of the family in front of their children and uh, at, that's at the first family meeting and we had family meetings developed where at the first meeting you know we we had them to tell the story and we actually then um, uh, formed a uh, an organization with a treasurer and uh, somebody to uh, run the meeting from the next generation and uh, the, the the bottom line of of the process was that we had family fun, family business, and also family development. And family okay. development included anything that uh, 
enhances the communication skills between the families because that's the biggest problem you have in families is communications not that they don't have great intent but they don't communicate properly so every meeting we would have a, a one family i worked with at the time i worked with about four families before i i stopped doing it and just mm-hmm. worked with the one, this one and uh, we really uh, accomplished a lot and i can mm-hmm. tell you i look back at one of the families we started with 20 years ago they're still using the process and they're doing it themselves and it's uh, it's working marvelous for them how and, uh, do you think do you think that um young people who are going into the financial planning field should um be skilled how do they get skilled in the area of this uh, kind of family planning how, how do you how, how do how would they go about becoming a part of this as a as a professional because i think as an advisor in my personal practice i don't do them as offices i don't treat my uh, the accounts as office but in in essence that i think they are i i think it's i think it's just it's it's almost like you're creating a family business out of the family um, would you say that? That's- yes, absolutely. You are. And uh, particularly, you know, everything doesn't go the way you, you'd like to have it go, because, uh, you know, one of the things I, I found out uh, just in the Heritage Institute still exists. It's a Heritage Institute. It's out of uh, I don't know where they move to now, uh, um, but I think we'll it's out it of the Midwest. Yeah. I think it I think it could be in Indianapolis, but uh, th- that they still do uh, a great deal of training for people and how to work with clients uh, and i'm not talking about like my client was uh, certainly uh, one for a family office uh, mm-hmm. uh, substantial wealth and uh, mm-hmm. uh, there are people that you can actually uh, work with that the things the tools that they give you at the heritage institute are exceptional and it, it right. they've been developed from from um for many years of, of doing this. So the success stories help to um, support what they're what they're doing. If, if it works, then we know if, if the outcome is what we expected it to be, then we know that our tools are working. So that's mm-hmm. yes, that's uh, that it's self-fulfilling in a sense. Um, so, Jack, uh, in the morning when you wake up, what do you look forward to right now? I look forward every day to, to uh, you know, uh, engaging myself and uh, trying to, I still work full time with this family. And uh, uh, I uh, will say that uh, I get excited about things like uh, I just found out today uh, we, I was going to be at uh, next week. We have, we have this dynasty trust, which we're making modifications on and we've been doing it for so quite some time (laughs) and it's finally ready to be rolled out Mm -hmm. and we were going to get all the uh, trustee advisors together next week but uh, the uh, the mother and the father the mother came down on uh sunday with covid and my oh my god uh, the father came down with covid today and the secretary came down so all my plans for next week have been scratched, <laughs> but uh, we were going to get the trustee advisors, which are the ones that approve any distributions. Yeah. And okay. uh, one of the things I made a mention of uh, is this time to trust bring uh, no harm financially is because everything is at the discretion of the trustee advisors. Okay. So and the trustee uh, advisors are the family members. Is that? Yeah. Well, they're not all. They're it's mm-hmm. made up of the the, the mother, and uh, two of their very close friends that sit on the committee, and uh, they also know the the father very well, who actually set the trust up. It's a fantastic uh, uh, objective for for families if they can achieve uh, that kind of uh, continuity of their wealth. It's not easy, and no. they do need they do need some talented advisors. And Jack, I know you've been doing this for a long time, and that you have a lot of expertise in this. I'm happy that you could share it today with our listeners and um, get people to get what the idea of having an advisor for a family office, uh, what that means. Uh, you actually almost become a part of the well, family, I guess. Yeah, I can become. I, I'm uh, my role is the communications and and to. Uh, to really 
make sure we're, we're, we're trying to, I think the parents, it's, you know, the family that created the wealth, they, um, it, it's a very different thing because of today we have so many families where, you know, the mother and the father are still not together because they've gotten divorced. And so you got these different families and that's what we have with this one. So that was a, a very big challenge. And I think uh, the challenge was focused around, could we get these people all together? And uh, we did it. We did. We got them all together. We got the grandkids many years ago. And today, I mean, we started this uh, in 2005, really, is when we really started having wow. the meetings. It's an amazing thing for a family to be able to get together and not have any uh, black sheep or... Uh pariahs or people that they're, you know, no, we're not friends with them. We're not friends. I mean, I have it, I see it in a lot of my client families where, uh, you know, brothers and sisters don't talk. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I don't get it, but that's the way things happen sometimes. Uh, that has to do with who they marry next, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, they, who's familiar with who. Anyway, Jack, um, when the, uh, when you started in business, did you have any idea that you'd be headed in this direction? No, actually, I didn't. I mean, I, I was, I, you know, I started the computer business, but got into the uh, insurance business. And in 1980, uh, we started a uh, Summit Financial um, in New Jersey in Precipity, and that company's still alive. And I decided in 1989 to leave it and uh, start my own financial planning. And I, I basically focused my, my practice around helping people uh, in the estate planning area. So uh, long about like 1998, I started saying, what, what am I doing here? I, I just did a $50 million policy into a trust. And I said, you know, we don't know anything about these kids because they're so young right now. And we're putting 50 million irrevocably into this trust. And so that in itself caused me concern. And I said, you know, I, I, I can't go out and sell these things anymore. So uh, I actually came across Jay Link, who was mm -hmm. doing this uh, mentoring out in um, Indianapolis. And uh, that's how I really fell into it. And uh, mm -hmm. I could tell you one thing after I was into it for a while and I stopped uh, doing the, the uh, fees for financial planning and, and uh, also commissions, it was a different business. I mean, yeah, totally. I, I, really different business. And, yeah. uh, and I, I can tell you it, uh, it was, it wasn't easy, but, um, I, because I, I go back to the family meetings. I mean, I had to have a psychologist there. I had to, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. He, oh yeah. He, he, and get prepared for it. You have to and do he, it, so he, that you don't do it wrong. Yeah. Sure. Even the attorney that I, uh, he was another, person he had tremendous skills in the uh uh the the whole family uh, uh situation where where he could really work very closely uh, with people and get them motivated to to want to to come together in the family mm -hmm. uh, he, the he was a key key person the, collaboration yeah the collaboration is very yeah. important giving you the opportunity to use professionals that are good at what they do as well. And I don't think that, uh, I don't think most people really understand and wealth is uh, relative. Um, I don't think that that should be restricted to the ultra wealthy, this kind of thought process. Um, no, it's not uh, otherwise you can never get there. Mm -hmm. So all. is there a criteria for people that you wanted to work with? Was there a criteria? Oh yeah. At some point? Yeah. I always wanted to work with an elephant. <laughs> uh yeah i mean i i, I started, the, started the process because this was all charging fees i there was nothing other than you, you yeah. could just imagine going in yeah. well one of the families i we charged over a couple of years like two years million and a half dollars wow uh, yeah. and we did a lot of work for them we did a lot of uh, uh of meetings that we prepared for we brought in talent uh, we brought in uh, philanthropic advisors to to help them in that area. Um, 
Tell me a little bit about that. I don't mean to interrupt you, but tell me a little bit about the philanthropic area of the planning, because that's what 664, you know, Route 664, the Road to Human Kindness is all about. Endow America Network Foundation, we want to endow America. So how does the philanthropy play a role in this? Well, uh, it comes down to, you know, how much is enough for the the family and children. and, And also there are so many opportunities for families to uh, do good uh, by uh, by setting up different um, you know instruments like a charitable remainder trust uh, uh, our family particularly I work with they they didn't want to set up a foundation they 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 wanted to go an easier route which is a donor mm-hmm. advised fund mm-hmm. and uh, we had to not only find a donor advised fund because uh, the uh, my client he he wanted to manage the money so we had to find a donor advice fund that we could manage the money. So that wasn't the easiest thing at the time. And, but the uh, point is that they that they are able to control their philanthropy. It's not throwing yes. money out the window, right? Is that, exactly. is that is that a major feature of this? That's a major feature of it. And and what uh, I did uh, with this family is I brought in a, a guy named Jay Steenheisen, and he his background is out. Uh, he worked in Silicon Valley out in you know uh, California. And he. Um, uh, hey, there you are. Hello. You're back. Hello. Okay, you got a, we had a blip. It's okay. Hello. You're talking about Steenheisen. Hello. Oh my God, darn phone. <laughs> there we are. Okay. You back? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? You're in the show. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we'll have some editing. Wanda will be doing her magic. So in any case, Jack, can you hear me? All right. Well, let's uh, let's see if we can. I'll, I'll get back in touch with Jack, I guess, after. We were, we we're actually uh, just about out of time anyway, I think, right? Um, so anyway, Jack, uh, Jack Sullivan is a board member for the Endow American Network Foundation. He's uh, uh, been doing family office business for uh, over 20 years with one particular family. And uh, what we were stressing in our interview was uh, how important it is for the family relationships to be held together and for everybody to understand what the course of the family's business is going to be over time. And that's that's done with an advisory staff. And generally, uh, we found that the professional philanthropic advisor is usually the impetus for that kind of uh, structure because the planning that goes into being a philanthropist encompasses every every aspect of an individual's life. And so when we use um, this kind of process, we need to collaborate with the other professionals, other professionals that are in dealing with the documentation, that dealing with the accounting, that dealing with the psychological issues there's a lot of things that go into this type of planning and we don't we don't uh, take it lightly from the standpoint of how we prepare for these kinds of um relationships these types of family office relationships so uh jack are you back yes i am somebody called me there so i had to (laughs) do what i did i'm I'm sorry yes Uh, i I have my cell phone so Okay. Yeah. So we were just we were talking about the philanthropic aspect of it. And um, I just was bringing the listeners up to, you know, we were, that we were discussing an office and how the offices are used to bring family units together and to work the family business over a long period of time. Um, we were talking about philanthropy as a part of this. Yes, I, I, I think I was talking about this Jay Steenheisen, who was uh, yes. he, he, he was a. Um, philanthropic advisors to some of the wealthiest people at the time, uh, the guy who started Netscape. I mean, he, he was really recognized as a top philanthropic advisor. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I brought him in because I have, uh, and this has to happen quite frequently. The uh, husband, uh, my client, he was all about helping people who wanted to help themselves. And she was a nurse and she was all about helping those who couldn't help themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, so how do you how do you put together something? It's very important to uh, to, first of all, if you're going to be involved in philanthropy, you, you, you should create a vision and a mission statement that you as a family believe in 
and then that's the next thing is is also getting the the next generation to buy into that and also be helpful uh, you know not only helpful but uh, have some ability to have input mm-hmm. to to from, the from so the other we, generations we, yes so we put a vision statement together and they by and large for the last 15 years they've given a lot millions and millions of dollars away and they've given it to um, universities um, He's very big in edu- you know, education, so he, he has, uh, in the local town, he, he put, put a lot of money into the local library. He did the libraries in two universities uh, that he's donated money to. And uh, she, on the other hand, has been very active in the health care area. She's, they've been very, uh, were, they were recognized as uh, top philanthropists for Penn State because they donated to... Uh, uh, the Milton Hershey uh, School, which uh, mm-hmm. um, not the Milton Hershey, the Hershey uh, Hospital, which uh, was bought up by uh, Penn State, mm-hmm. and it's a teaching facility. Mm-hmm. So when you're um, when you're looking back on all of this, the satisfaction level that you have as far as your work with them, how do you, how do you how do you rate yourself? How do you feel about all that? Oh, I, I feel good about it. I, I get frustrated sometimes. Uh, where's, what's causing that? Oh, okay. All right. Well, technology has stepped in again and interfered with our program. So uh, I'm going to, uh, hopefully I'll get to, to redo some of this interview with Jack. Maybe we can schedule it again. It's very interesting talking with uh, some of that kind of experience working in the family office area and uh, getting to understand the kind of work that philanthropic advisors, professional philanthropic advisors can do, what uh, what the capability is. If you wanted to find out where Jack is or get in touch with Jack Sullivan, uh, Jack is on our socialcharity.org um, find an advisor uh, tab. If you go to socialcharity.org, go to find an advisor, that will take you to the Council of Professional Philanthropic Advisors, which is a project of the Endow American Network Foundation, and you'll find Jack's listing there. Just look up Jack Sullivan. Uh, there are a lot of other advisors there as well, and we hope that you'll visit that site and learn more about social to charity. Those are charitable remainder trusts, charitable gift annuities, pooled income funds. They're devices that create income for later in life, and um, you can use them to supplement retirement. And Jack, are you back? Yeah. Yeah. I think Jack. I think I, the last part. I think I'm going to say. I'm going to say adieu. <laughs> we, <laughs> we need. We need to. Um, we need to wrap up the program. So what sure. I'd like to do, actually, if you if it's good with you, I'd like to interview you again. Um, okay. I'd like to sounds... talk about. I'd like to talk about some of the more intricate parts of what you're planning. You know how that planning is done because I think it's very interesting for people to understand how to keep their families together in a business yeah, sense is... yep. and uh, and help. Uh, you know, uh, pass wealth continuously, soundly. Are we getting the, is that the right concept? Yeah, well, it's yeah. You you want to do it in a meaningful way that uh, is important to to the mother and the father that created the wealth, and they it's it is all about the values that 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 were there to create this wealth, and uh, there's so many uh, people that need this uh, help. I mean, I see them all the time. I do. I meet a lot of people that really need to help. I, I don't have the time, but if they had enough advisors out there, yeah, they, there's a lot of help. Uh, Thank you, sir, you, you for that. It. Thank you. We need more advisors. And Jack, you're uh, one of the best. And thank you for serving on our board. And uh, thank you for the interview today. And we'll see you again shortly. We're going to do okay. this one more time. Take care. Terrific, Les. Okay, thank you. Right. Bye-bye. And thank you, folks, for listening today to uh, Route 664, The Road to Human Kindness. You get there by doing a lot of different things. Um, one of the ways you can get there is by using social security devices, uh, build an endowment for yourself, and build an endowment for the community. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Don't forget to visit.